Here is a Philco radio, and this is model 46420, sometimes called the Hippo model, maybe because the rounded contours of it suggest a hippopotamus, maybe a hippopotamus head. But this required just the, uh, the usual repair jobs on it. Thank goodness it had these large style, old style IF cans. It didn't require the IF can repair that seems to be uh, needed in every single radio I've found recently that uses those smaller IF cans with the mica wafers in them. This is a, a fairly older design and I've got one similar to this but it uses more modern and kind of cheaper stuff in it like those pesky IF cans. It's actually got a field coil type speaker, which is more rare on these transformerless sets. It uses a uh, RF amplifier stage, but it only has a two gang tuning capacitor. Even so, the RF stage does help uh, pick up some more distant stations. Had to rewire the uh, dial lamp wiring here. And I'll put a fuse in it for extra protection. The 35Z5 tube is, I think, designed uh, so that the circuit will be opened in case of a, uh, a short, because looking at the schematic here, all AC power flows through both the dial lamp and part of the filament to get up to the plate. There's no direct connection between the AC line and the plate, and so this acts as a fusible resistor to uh, help uh, protect in case of a shore, but I wanted to be doubly sure that we have protection, so we put an actual fuse in the circuit too. And we put all new capacitors in it, and one thing was that I think a mouse had eaten the wiring, the old wire on it, that's why I had to replace it, and the 35Z5 tube had shorted, and uh, I think the filament filament had shorted out and burned open and so when I first plugged it in the dial lamp shorted right out I think because of the short and the the set didn't power up because the the uh, tube had blown open because of a short so a new tube was needed for this one otherwise it's all the original tubes the dial cord on this this one is a little bit different than similar ones I've seen this is just a spring-loaded, see if you can see it here, this just operates on a spring. There's some spring tension on it and that actually moves the dial pointer. And I hook this up so that it works kind of like those FM tuners that you might have seen. Those type that use a, a pool type, a variable inductor that, kinda, that you kind of pull a string. There's you know some of those FM modules use that string type system so this just is the tuning uh, as this tuning wheel turns just pulls on this little piece of dial cord which then pulls on the dial mechanism and holds it at the right place I made a, a, a loop in this and knotted it so that the chassis can be removed from the cabinet for servicing also had to repair the wiring going to the loop antenna it's kind of an early style of loop antenna. Usually they're built into the back cabinet or the uh, back panel of the radio, but this one is just uh, kind of mounted inside the Bakelite cabinet. Now I'm going to turn it over here and see what's inside. Let me, uh, let me turn the light on here. Well, I guess the light isn't plugged in. Let's see here. That's kind of strange. Oh well, I think we can I think we can probably see in here. Just put in all new capacitors. Just a real straightforward repair job. This initially used a uh, where is it here? Used a 0.2 microfarad capacitor between the uh, circuit ground. There it is the circuit ground and the chassis and I used a lower value of capacitance to try to reduce the amount of leakage 
between the actual power line ground and the chassis ground. I even tried to cut it back some more, but I got down to about 0.047, but you'd still get some oscillation type noise because the tuning capacitor here grounds to the uh, grounds to the chassis rather than the circuit ground. So in order to get an RF ground path, you've got to go through this RC network here. So I, I, I went ahead and used point 0.1. Point 0.1 seems to work good enough, but I think it would offer less leakage current from the uh, power line onto the chassis. And then also for additional safety, we uh, put, it on, put on a uh, polarized cord with the wide blade of the prong hooked to the uh, hooked to the circuit ground here, not directly to the chassis. Of course, it has to go through the isolation network. But the the wide blade of the power cord is the neutral, so that way you've got some additional protection, so you don't have the hot line, hot side of the line running to the ground if the outlet in the house is wired right. So I'm going to try something new here. I actually got a computer uh, that's got some more RAM in it. And so I'm going to stop the recording here. Or I might, if that doesn't work, I may just do this as two separate videos. I might even do that anyway just for convenience. But I might see if I can edit it together into one. I'm going to put it all back together here and uh, give a demonstration of it.